Okay. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining this live webinar for drug development and neurohealth, the new specialization of the research master cognitive and clinical neuroscience. My name is Julia, I'm a third year psychology bachelor student right now, so I'm also very interested in all the possibilities for my master that this faculty can offer me. Today we'll be discussing the program's content, student perspectives, the admission procedure, career possibilities and even more. But you will be deciding on the topics by just posing questions in the comment section below this post. Thank you here already to Yella, Sophie and Edward who already commented and asked questions. For Edward and also all the other people who might not be able to see the live session right now, don't worry, we will record it so you can always check it out later. So just follow the example and post the questions uh, in the comment section. I will pass them on to our panel who is sitting with me here right now. So let's introduce them. Hello, my name is Wim Riedel. I am the coordinator of this specialization, drug development and neurohealth. And I'm a professor of experimental psychopharmacology. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jana. I'm the first year student of this master. Hi, I'm Renee. I'm the admissions officer at the faculty and I process all applications for the master's programs. Okay, thank you. Drug development in NeuroHub is the new specialization of the research master of cognitive and clinical neuroscience. Wim, how did the idea form to start up this program? Um, well, to put it really short first, because it didn't exist, there was nothing like this in the whole world. Um, other reasons are that um, we have a large uh, psychopharmacology research group here in the faculty and it, it, um, in order to set up the program we also joined efforts with other groups in Faculty of Health uh, Medicine and Life Science, in particular toxicogenomics, pharmacology, psychiatry and the uh, hospital pharmacy. Okay, thank you very much. Psychology and neuroscience is a very broad field. Then can you maybe tell us a bit more about what subjects drug development and neural health actually explores? Um, yes, we, we basically explore the fate of a new medicine, a new chemical, a new substance, from cell to bedside, as it is called. We also call it from test tube to uh, administration to human volunteers or patients. So that means we, we look at research methods from molecular biological uh, to behavioral um, methods of uh, investigating drug effects in humans. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Thank you. So as I said, we already have some first questions. So Yella wanted to know about specific possibilities in industry immediately after graduation. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. Um, immediately after the research masters, I think I can give several answers to this. The, the ideal answer is you find a PhD uh, program because that's what the research master basically trains for uh, to become a, a researcher. So you need a PhD. This is also true if you want to uh, strive to a research, um, drug research and development career. In, um, in pharmaceutical or nutritional industry, uh, you also need a PhD. Having said that, even without a PhD, I'm sure uh, you increase your chances in the industry market because our program actually uh, gives you a good look in their, in their research kitchen. Okay, thank you very much. She also had the question if the skills that you learn during the program also extend to drug development in general, so like for example, targeted cancer therapy. Yeah, yeah. regarding the first bit of the question, yes. Um, a lot of what you learn about drug research and development are, are methods and um, uh, they are perspectives that you can easily transfer to other therapeutic areas, but frankly, we only uh, look at uh, the neuroscience therapeutic area in the context of the curriculum. Um, but of course, if you, if you have done that, you could transfer it to other areas, yes. Okay, thank you. Then we had another question from Sophie. She heard of students who went for the research internship to Japan. 
Can you tell a bit more about the possibilities to go abroad during the research internship? Yes. Um, also here I can start with a very simple answer is that you can you, the last eight months of the two-year curriculum in this research master will consist of the research internship and you can do it wherever you like provided that we approve it on the basis of content and quality. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Japan. Uh, yes, there is currently there are 14 students in the first group that started this master and one of them is indeed in Japan and Fukuoka University yeah. doing research on drugs for epilepsy. Okay, that sounds really exciting. Jana, you're a first year student right now. Yeah. How did you first find out about this program? Um, well, it is one of the top rated programs, so if you look around, Masters is for sure something it comes up, it pops up first. And especially in the drug development, if you Google it, there is no other master like this. It's very unique, it's very special. And if you are interested in this kind of area, and also especially in research, this is one of the first masters uh, that you will consider. Okay, nice. You've been in the program now for a couple of months already. Do you have any favorite courses? Um, no, I can't say that I have one particular favorite course because it's also interconnected. So you learn about the full concept and every course, you think like you know a lot about it and then the next course tells you even more about the course you had before. So everything gives a really nice picture altogether. Okay. To be able to follow this program, Jana had to complete the selection procedure successfully and she did that, obviously. Can you, can you quickly walk us through the application procedure for this program? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, I would recommend that all candidates who are interested in the program first go uh, to the website and check the application and admission procedure um, before you actually start with the, with the application. Application start in, in StudyLink, um, and I would recommend not to wait until the deadline because once you have applied in StudyLink, it will take a couple of days before you get the login details for the MyUM portal. And in this MyUM portal, you have to upload all required documents. And uh, so this procedure might take like a week. So don't wait until the application deadline, of the, which is the 31st of March. And um, th there's one uh, do document or two documents actually um, about which students are, or applicants are often confused, that are the reference letters. Um, because candidates are not allowed to upload reference letters themselves. So on the website there is a link to uh, a form, a special reference form, that referees have to fill in. And so they have to fill it in and submit it and then we upload it for the candidates in their file in the MyUM portal. And yeah, as you can imagine, it might take a couple of days if you ask a referee, could you please uh, fill in a reference form? So you should give him or her time um, to think about to think about it and to complete the form and give us a couple of days to upload it in your file in the MyUM portal. And also important is to read about the English language requirements. So for those students um, who have to do an English language exam, they have to be aware that the exam um, must have been successfully uh, completed before the application deadline. And if you cannot manage, then at least you should upload the invitation letter for the official exam. Yeah, and that's, yeah so once the pile is complete, um, yeah, we will help assist students uh, during the whole application uh, process. And of course, they can always email us when they're facing troubles or need otherwise assistance with the application. Um, but once the file is complete, we'll give it to the Board of Admissions for, for screening. That's, yeah, that's basically the <laughs> application <laughs> process. Thank you for clarifying. Um, Wim, you'll select the candidates in the end. Can you maybe give us some insights on how you're going to do this? I will not do it completely on my own, thank you. <laughs> um, I'll do it with uh, one of my, my colleagues. We, uh, we, we look at um, 
all the applications and we mainly we mainly look at um, motivation so what is your motivation to do this master can you convince us that that you are one of the born drug researchers <laughs> um, <laughs> meaning that what is also important is is especially how much knowledge you already have of methodology and statistic statistics anything uh, research tools associated um, of course we look at the, at the grades but we we first look at uh, what is your motivation how how can you convince us that this is your this is your best profile okay yeah. thank you Jana, you also went through this um, procedure. Can you tell us from the student's perspective how you experienced it? Yeah, I had first the wrong impression because first if you apply for a master like this, you think that the most important thing is actually the grades, but it's not. The most important thing for me and which I notice is the motivation and that you have thought about it, that it's not like you actually are going there without any idea of what you want to do. You really have to be sure that you want to do drug development. And if you write that in your motivational letter, and if you really write that convincing, then it actually won't be an issue. And also the interview which you have during this um, selection procedure is rather relaxed than actually you don't have to be really nervous or scared. It won't bite your head off. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, in the second year of the program, we already talked about it, you're going to do a research internship. Wim, can you maybe tell a bit more about the possibilities that you can do? Um, well, as you said, um, it has to be a research internship. So, so you look for a place where you can do research that you like. With drug development and neural health, it's important to realize that um, you should also think about profiles like, let's say roughly we can, we can make a distinction between preclinical and clinical research. And even within preclinical, uh, we can make a distinction between cellular or animal, uh, working with animals. And in human research, you can make a distinction between uh, doing drug studies in healthy volunteers, more experimental, or clinical studies, really testing new medicines in patients. Um, does that answer your question? Um, and I already said before, we have collaborations with various places in the world who are interested in exactly the same things as we are. Uh, on the other hand, students can also make the connections themselves, like I think you did. Yeah. Yeah, I made a connection to Berlin recently, so that is new. And that's why we also get always, like, if you really want to have a place for your internship, you can be sure, and they are making good research, you can be sure you can go there. Okay, really nice. Yeah. Do you already know what you're going to do in your second year for the internship? Yes, I will go to Berlin, where I will join a team which is actually doing um, multiple sclerosis research and improving diagnostic tools there which is a lot with um, imaging techniques, which was really also already uh, one of my f interests before this master. Oh, wow. That sounds really exciting. <laughs> Another topic of interest are career perspectives after graduation, of course. So far, no one has graduated from this uh, specialization yet, but can you give some more ideas about career perspectives that students have? Uh, sure. We, so, so uh, like, uh, all research master specializations we also like to uh, recommend students to to continue after the research master with a, a PhD project to get a dissertation and uh, after that I think the world is very wide so, so we have de uh, deliberately broadened students horizon uh, not only in academia, but also pharmaceutical industry, nutritional industry, or small biotechs. Could also be uh, healthcare, could also be uh, regulatory. Think about the EMEA that comes to Amsterdam, closer to us. Anyway, so there are lots of possibilities. Okay. Yeah. Jana, can you tell us more about what a typical day of a student in this program looks like? 
Yeah, well, a typical day. Um, usually you have first your lectures and then your tutorials. Tutorials are here PBL based, um, which is small discussion rounds and you um, exchange knowledge actively. We are a small group. Usually research masters are between 13 and 20 persons per track. And that enhances, like if you know each other really well, that enhances these tutorials. And then um, once the discussion is done, usually at four to six, sometimes earlier, you have a lot of free time to also enjoy your master time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You already mentioned it, that one aspect of the research master, master that pride itself on is the small scale education. So smaller groups and more attention on the individual student. How do you experience that as a student? Um, I really like it because it's not only that you have these small groups where you basically discuss better because if you know each other it's very easy to discuss and exchange and it's also easier if you have gaps and you will notice you have gaps because we are very interdisciplinary. Um, some people know more about the pharmaco side, some people know more about psychology, others about medical, but it's not a problem to ask these questions, especially if you know each other so well, which makes it really nice. And um, also it's more social with the professors, you know, every professor, uh, every professor knows you. And um, in the end, if we are always going out together, so it's really nice. <laughs> that sounds really good. Yeah. Um, this question can be for either of you. Are there any misconceptions about the program that students had or that you had in the beginning that you might to clear up today? <laughs> Um, gosh, misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Well, I had this. I had this typical observation that I did not expect in in the first year we set it up. So we started 2016, mm -hmm. and I think s something interesting to mention is that, yeah we deliberately recruit uh, students f with a psychology bachelor on the one hand or a biomedical bachelor on the other hand, and. Um, Typically, we get about half-half from, from each. Uh, and it was then a surprise that in the first group, I don't know how it is in this group, but in the first group, after the first two courses, everybody wanted to focus on the more molecular biological profile. And that was something like, OK, I, did, I had not expected this. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have some people which actually go from psychology more to the biologic part but um, also a lot that stay with psychology kind of clinical research. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the most the misconception that I experienced also on the master fairs were basically drug research is about medicine. It's not about pure illegal drugs <laughs> and people have to recognize this. So um, that is, it's not about this one. It's really about the medicine development, helping people. It's really good um, on that kind of medicine pipeline. Although I can add to this that, that um, the brain doesn't make a distinction between, between legal or illegal substances. And, and that's <laughs> not a joke. We are interested in the mechanism of action of, of either. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Thank you very much. Our time is almost up. I'm just checking if you have any questions still unanswered. Um, I think not. So I would thank our panel for your time and input and also to the viewers for your questions and tuning in. Um, if your question has not been answered or you still have other questions, just post them underneath this video and we will make sure to answer them after this live session. Thanks again for listening and if you're interested in the neuroeconomics a specialization of the research master, then make sure to watch again tomorrow at 2.30 at this channel as well. Thank you.